Hey, this is Ralph, and in this video I want to go over some more CSS selectors. In particular, I want to talk about the descendant and group selectors, and I might throw in child selectors also. So um, I've got a blank uh, notepad++ file right here, so let me take a quick second and put in my basic HTML. Okay, there we go. So I've got uh, doc type definition for HTML5, HTML tag with language attribute, head section with character encoding meta, and I've got a title for my page. I'm setting up for some internal or embedded style, so I'm going to do a little bit of CSS right here on my HTML file. That ends the head section. The body of the page only has a headline one right now, and I've already saved this over to my desktop. Let me go ahead and run this in Firefox so I can see how it now looks. There we go. So there's my headline one. Okay, so to really get into this, and of course you've already you've already seen some basic CSS selectors before. You've seen ID selectors and you've seen class selectors, and of course the very generic type or tag selector. So let's go ahead and take care of that real quick. I'm just going to go ahead and do a quick uh, type selector. You might hear these called tag selectors also. Basically I just want to manipulate my headline one and I'm going to do a border bottom to pick solid black and text align center. So really small change affecting just my H1 element. So if I refresh my browser, there we go. So very common type selector. Um, might as well do descendant first here. So in order to demonstrate a descendant selector, give myself a little bit more room to work. And I'm going to do a couple different things. I'm going to have an unordered list. And within that I'll do a couple list items. I'm going to do a generic link. And I'll duplicate that a few times. By the way, in Notepad++, I'm just pressing Control D to duplicate a line. So I've got a hyperlink inside of a list item inside of an unordered list. And then I'm also going to go down here and I'm going to have a paragraph. And this is some regular text and a paragraph and I will make a hyperlink out of some of this. Okay, so I've got an unordered list, list items with hyperlinks, and I've got a paragraph with hyperlink. So let me go ahead and, now oh, that's all saved already, so if I refresh, there we go. So I'm getting the default blue hyperlink, and there we go, we can see it for that. Let me zoom in so it's nice and big for you there. And what I want to do is I want to manipulate my hyperlinks that are in my list items different than my hyperlinks that are in my paragraph. And this is a great example of using a descendant selector. And a descendant selector is really easy to work with. Basically I'll use type selectors in this example, but I'll have a space in between. So I can say that, you know what, I want list item space A. I want my anchor tags in my list items to be text decoration none, but I want anchor tags that are in my paragraphs, I want them to be underlined, but maybe I want them to be bold, font weight bold. Save that. So what I'm doing here is anchor tag, and I'm reading this right to left here, anchor tags that are within list items or anchor tags that are within paragraphs. And this is a descendant selector, and I'm going to emphasize this point more in just a second here, but basically my anchor tag is a descendant of my list item, and my anchor tag is a descendant of paragraph. There's an anchor tag, it's a descendant, it's a child, grandchild, great-grandchild of list item. and my anchor tag is a descendant of paragraph because it's inside of that paragraph. And now when I save this, go to my browser and refresh, there we go. My text decoration of no, no underlining on my list items and my paragraph anchor tag is bold. Now, because I'm doing a descendant selector, technically I could have said that my anchor tag is a descendant of the unordered list. So if I change this li to a ul, it's still accurate and you won't see any change at all. If I save this, browser, refresh, no change at all. So this is still valid. Back over to my editor, there we go. So my anchor tag is truly a descendant of my unordered list. 
my unordered list contains the list item and the list item contains the anchor so it's really think of it this way we've got a uh, a parent unordered list we have a child list item and then we have a grandchild anchor tag child grandchild great grandchild great great grandchild doesn't really matter since i'm using a descendant selector which is which is simply a space the um the descendancy whatever can go as far as it needs to that's a little different than a child selector okay so if i were to do this put in this little uh, greater than sign this now denotes a child selector watch what happens so i'm going to save this go to my browser and refresh and notice my underlining is back that's because i'm specifying a situation which doesn't exist by putting in this angle bracket I'm now using what's called a child selector instead of a descendant selector. And this means that my anchors that are direct children of my unordered list are going to be text decoration none. Well, I don't have that situation. I don't have any anchor tags that are a direct child to an unordered list. I've got a grandchild, but not a direct child. So I now have an invalid kind of rule. If I change this over to list item, save that my underlining will disappear again there we go so this is a child selector my anchor is a direct child of list item and sure enough anchor tag is directly within my list item now it's kind of weird and if you were to look at a let's say 100 web pages and look for examples of selectors you will probably not see the child selector as often because it's very specific okay um, most often you'll see simply a space denoting a descendant selector and it's much more comprehensive but sometimes you really do need to get specific we're starting off pretty basic here so not really necessary for so descendant selector is great to use very popular let's jump over to uh, Mike I did Apple as a demo on the other site so let's just head over to Microsoft and I'm gonna view their source code real quick okay and this is the HTML for Microsoft let's see if I can't find a reference to their CSS file looks like one right here oh what a pain um, sometimes you'll see this if you ever view somebody else's page you'll see a bunch of um, they basically have truncated this down into one row and what they've done is they've removed a bunch of spaces and tabs to shorten their file size make their file size smaller so it loads just a little bit faster so it's a little bit not as friendly to look at Apple doesn't do that so let's go back and check theirs out so let me just get a blank spot here right click and I need to be on a different area to right click Okay, so this is the HTML for Apple. Let's head over to their, let's see, their CSS. That's for navigation. A bunch of others. Here's, here's their base style sheet. So here we go. So this is a CSS for Apple's website controlling their layout. Let me zoom in just a little bit. We'll see examples. Oh, by the way, up here, this is a reset rule. I'm a, very fond of reset rules and they have a much more complicated one than I tend to use my reset rules I tend just to use a um, asterisk but the good thing about this this is an example of a grouped selector which is something else I want to demonstrate and they're using it right here over Apple's website group selector is when you use a comma to separate your various individual selectors okay there's a standard type or tag selector and pretty soon here we go so this is a combination if I look just at this part right here we have product header space h1 space a this is a descendant selector and a group selector combined basically but anchors that are within h1 that are within product header okay so they must have a div or something with ID equals product header and then there's headline ones probably within that and within that headline one they have anchor tags or hyperlinks so they're manipulating those so that's a descendant selector and then we see a comma because it's also a grouped selector which means 
anchor tags that are within headline twos that are within product header. So sometimes product header has H1, sometimes it has H2, but they want to format the anchor tags and the H2s and the anchor tags and the H1s in the same way. So they're using a combination of a descendant selector mixed with a grouped selector. And you can combine them. That's perfectly reasonable to do. So if you view through, you know, just kind of scroll through here, you'll see tons of examples of that kind of stuff. Here we go. These are more descendant selectors. There's a class selector, space, another class selector. Okay, so basically what's going on here is one is going to be inside of the other, separated by a space. Very, very common. Here's another group selector I see. Paragraph, class last, comma, unordered list, class last, ordered list, class last. So this is a group selector. And it looks like they're manipulating the last item of list items, the last in an ordered list, and stuff like that. And they're setting some characteristics. Another group selector. All right, so back over to my HTML. Um, this is a descendant selector with a space. Well, let's do a group selector. Let's see, I'm going to put down a headline two here. And this will be a uh, list. And then I'll do another headline too. Paragraph. Excellent. And I want my headline ones and my headline twos to have the same characteristics, so I'm going to use a group selector. H1, comma, H2. They are both going to have a bottom border that's black, and they're both going to be text aligned center. So I can save this. Head back to my browser, refresh, there we go. So my headline ones, bottom border, my headline twos also have that bottom border. All right, so I think that takes care of what I wanted to show you here. Descendant selector and group selectors are the focus, but don't forget there's also child selectors. I'll probably bring up child selectors later on in a more intermediate level video, but this is enough to get you started. And as you've seen from that Apple website and many other websites you look at, descendant selectors and group selectors are extremely common. So you want to get in the habit of starting to use those so that you can manip uh, manipulate those elements on your web page. Have fun.